Over the past two decades, Turkey has become a regional power. Its economy is growing, it's moving towards becoming an energy hub, and its geopolitical reach extends farther and greater every year. I sit down with the Turkish Vice President, Cevdet Yilmaz, to discuss the relationship with the United States, diplomacy on the war in Ukraine, and also the country's economy. I'm Yusuf Aram, and you're watching One on One. Vice President Cevdet Yilmaz, thank you for joining me on the sidelines of the Antalya Diplomacy Forum. Now, I was just listening to you speak, and you talked about the economy being bigger than seven, obviously mentioning the G7 over there. What are your thoughts right now on the global economy and how seven powers really have a stranglehold on it? No, unfortunately, our growth rates and uh, trade uh, globally are under historical averages. Uh, there are lots of conjunctural uh, issues that are uh, producing these results, like geopolitical tensions, pandemics, and it is repercussions, effects on economy. Uh, there are some conjunctural issues, but there is also an underlying trend. The production is shifting from west to east. New countries are emerging as new economic powers, but the institutions are still the old institutions, and they uh, have uh, largely been uh, framed after uh, the Second World War. What I try to emphasize, uh, we need a new global governance not only in political issues, but also in economy policy coordination. And it is not just enough to uh, discuss uh, in G7 platforms about economy. We should discuss it with more inclusive governance structures in economy. And there is definitely a need to coordinate economic policies to come out of this, uh, you know, low levels of growth and trade that also limit social world welfare all over the world. I remember about six, seven years ago, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, he was talking about trading in local currencies. It was a time when the Turkish lira was facing some shocks. Now, today, with Russia being sanctioned, other countries facing san sanctions, we're seeing a lot of countries actually shift to local currencies for trade. How do you see the future of a yuan, for example, or a ruble, or a, a currency that we don't know of in the future, maybe a BRICS currency, being a second or a third standard for global trade? That would take some time, speaking realistically, but uh, if, if countries trade with their own currencies, uh, of course that would be good for reducing currency risks and also uh, making things easier for their trade. Uh, when you look at his, uh, the problem historically, uh, usually neighbors trade more than others. And if they have their own currencies used in this trade, that would even more facilitate their trade volumes and reduce the cost and uh, currency risks for them. And that would, of course, uh, again, contribute to the welfare of these countries, development process of these countries. But that is just an instrument. The larger picture is that uh, under these current global conditions, we cannot sit and wait for uh, you know, long-term solutions. We also have to work for different strategies to come out of these uh, problems. And uh, bilateral trade, regional trade, trade with your neighbors are important uh, in that context. And Turkey is following these uh, policies. We try to increase the trade with our neighbors, with our regions. We act in many different regional platforms. We are a candidate to EU, of course. We have customs union. We have a platform in, among Islamic countries, we call it ISADAK, uh, and we try to have a regional uh, you know, trade facilitation. So there are lots of regional platforms Turkey uh, also uh, working on. We believe that trade is good for all countries, and we should uh, 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 increase trade rather than geopolitical tensions. Uh, what we, we, we don't need bombs, we need diplomacy. We need more uh, initiatives that will foster welfare rather than destroy the cities and people. So Turkey is uh, always uh, defending diplomacy over uh, conflict and trade over, you know, uh, wars or uh, geopolitical tensions. And that perspective is also uh, discussed largely in this Antalya Diplomacy Forum.
In the second half of last year, you, along with the finance minister, unveiled the medium-term economic plan. Now, it's been about six, seven months. When you look at the targets of the economic plan and where Turkey's economy is at today, how are you feeling? Are you feeling satisfied, confident, or is there more work to do still? You know what? Uncertainties are enemy of economic development. The May elections last year have reduced political uncertainties in Tur Turkey. And just uh, right after the elections, we have formed a new uh, economy team and we worked uh, on medium term program and our five year development program. So we not only reduced political certainties, we also reduced policy certainties by these documents. So the roadmap is now clear. Uh, for three years, for five years, and longer-term roadmaps. Uh, that reduces uncertainties, creates predictability for the public and private sector to act more efficiently. So we are also, uh, we, we also have a strong backing by President Erdogan on this uh, medium-term program. You can prepare the best program of the world, but if there is no political support, it doesn't mean anything. So uh, Mr. Erdogan is uh, strongly supporting our program. We are implementing it under three headings, actually. Monetary policy, fiscal policy, and structural reforms. We have updated our monetary policy. Uh, 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 disinflationary policy is being pursued by our central bank. On the other hand, despite spending uh, that is raised by uh, earthquakes, we are very careful about uh, our fiscal uh, spending. We control our uh, budget deficit in a reasonable level. Uh, and uh, thirdly, we f are focusing on structural reforms. Turkey is at a threshold, you know. We have just uh, announced our growth rates. Uh, and uh, last year, the, our volume, uh, the volume of economy is, uh, for the first time in our history, was above $1 trillion, even uh, above $1.1 $1 .1 trillion, actually. So uh, now we want to pass this threshold and become part of high income uh, category. Uh, and that requires structural reforms. We will focus on these re reforms according to our programs with, of course, uh, consultation with all stakeholders. Turkey will achieve these reforms and become part of this high income group. I want to shift a little to geopolitics, the relationship with the United States. Turkey recently ratified Sweden's NATO accession, followed by the uh, America approving F-16 sales, a Turkish company doing joint production in Texas for artillery shells. It looks like after a decade of very frosty relations, there's some positive momentum uh, going forward. How do you view the relationship where it is at right now? That's also my observation, actually, after the ratification of uh NATO membership, uh, you know, uh, uh, agreement. Uh, there is a different atmosphere, and I hope this atmosphere will also uh, help us to resolve other problems. Uh, we should be realistic, of course. Uh, there are uh, a number of problems that we have to work on together. I believe that uh, U.S. and uh, Turkey have common interest, objectively speaking. But unfortunately, sometimes there is a negative uh, spiral, you know, a problem leading to another problem. This time around, I would like to see a positive spiral. I mean, resolving a problem should uh, take us to resolve another problem. And that process will uh, bring us to a different uh, level of relationship. I believe uh, U.S. and Turkey will both benefit from this positive atmosphere. And that should not be just confined to state-to-state -to -state relations. We should also increase the relations between parliamentarians, parliaments, private sector, uh, media, academia. The channels of communication should be uh, diversified and effective so that we can uh, resolve these issues and uh, generate benefits for both countries. You are on a panel with the chairman of the People's Council of Turkmenistan, and he announced that Turkmen gas via Turkey will be going to European markets now. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has wanted to turn Turkey into an energy hub. What does this deal mean for Turkey? Very important, actually. Turkey is not just a big uh, market for energy. It is not just a transit country. We would like to see Turkey to be also an 
energy hub, uh, an international uh, trade center for energy relations. So that uh, important project between Turkey and Turkmenistan will contribute to this vision. President Erdogan has put this vision uh, uh, in front of our you know, uh, institutions. We now work uh, to create a center in Istanbul finance uh, you know, uh, 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 center, uh, a part of as a part of this center, we will establish an international, you know, energy uh, market, and we are also working on this carbon emission system in Turkey. So there are lots of different initiatives, and also there is a law now in our parliament; it will uh, soon be enacted. For example, it gives the authority to import natural gas transform it into liquid and then export to Europe or other markets. I believe this initiative will also benefit Europe a lot, which is under great stress in terms of energy. We talked about energy hub and another country that wants to see Turkey become an energy hub is Russia. The Green Corridor deal, very important. The Turkish president wants to revive that. Russian, the Russian president's expected to visit Turkey soon. How do you see talks on the Grain Corridor, war in Ukraine, and the agenda for an Erdogan-Putin meeting? You know, we have strategic relations with Ukraine and very good neighborly relations with Russia. We are doing our best for a diplomatic solution, political solution uh, to the Ukraine-Russia war. And we had managed this grain deal, which was not only important for the region, but for globally, actually. It benefited especially the least developed countries that were in need of, uh, you know, uh, these resources. And energy is an important topic between Russia and Turkey. We import uh, important uh, energy materials, especially, of course, natural gas. And uh, that, uh, th that is uh, with, with definitely an important infrastructure. And uh, we would like to be, of course, as I said, an energy hub, a center for energy trade, and part of this will also be related with uh, Turkey, Russia, energy, uh, uh, you know, uh, trade. And I hope we will have, we will discuss these issues more in the future rather than Ukraine, Russia conflict or the terrible situation in Gaza or, you know, uh, other regional uh, geopolitical tensions. The, our region and the world needs to discuss more about trade rather than political tensions and conflicts. And in that sense, Turkey and Russia have very good dialogues. President Erdogan has excellent channels of communication with Mr. Zelensky and Mr. Putin. And that is uh, not a liability, but an asset for our allies. I believe our allies should also help Turkey to uh, uh, engage with uh, all relevant actors to generate better economic results as well as political peace and uh, prosperity in this region. Vice President Cevdet Yilmaz, thank you for joining us on One on One. I hope you have a very productive Antalya Diplomacy Forum. Thank you very much.